So um, thank you all for coming. Again, this is an online learning and innovation webinar topic from Amy Brown from the Teaching Innovations Office and Evan Kelly from Learning Technologies in ITS. Um, and I'm going to pass it on to them. And if you're just coming in, we just were doing the introductions. We just pushed record um, and we're going to get started. And Amy and Evan are going to be talking about blended learning at UNCG and different technologies. Um, and we did we, we are asking for people to stay muted for the presentation um, while Amy and Evan present, but to unmute uh, to ask questions. And you can also ask questions in the chat. So thanks, y'all. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. So just prepare yourself. Um, hopefully everyone can see my slideshow. Um, yes, as I tell my students, it. if you can, okay, thank you. Also, thank you very much. So uh, welcome everybody. This is uh, titled Strategies and Spaces, Blended Learning at UNCG. Um, so um, we're co-presenting together, Evan and I. So Evan can, I can't see the chat, but Evan can. So glad to see you here today. Um, wanted to first introduce ourselves in case you don't know us. Um, I'm Amy Brown, I'm Assistant Director of Teaching Innovations Office here at the UTLC. And Evan, can you take a moment to introduce yourself? Yep, I'm Evan Kelly. Uh, I'm an Instructional Technology Consultant with the Learning Technology Group in ITS. Fantastic, thank you. So we have some ambitious goals today for our brief time together for 30 minutes. And that is, we wanna define what is blended learning. So kind of, kind of get over this term. And then next we wanna talk about how UNCG defines this term. So I've done some research to share with that with that, you guys. And then next question, when is it really appropriate? So is it really for everyone? And then share those next steps. So if you've decided to make that leap, then what do you do next? Uh, finally, we're going to let Evan kind of show us some new spaces here on campus for blended learning. And then today you'll actually get to experience some of those new places as a participant. So um, that's very exciting. So let's start today first by talking about what is what is your perception of blended learning? Sorry about that. And so if you would take a moment in the chat, 20 seconds, and kind of share some words, phrases that come to mind when you think of blended learning. So just kind of share that. And Evan, if you wouldn't mind saying those out loud for me, since I can't see the chat. Yeah, definitely. And don't be shy. All right. Uh, we have Matthew saying hybrid multimodal and Sam saying I teach in person for the libraries and Zoom is on while I'm there in person. That's my experience. And Audrey says some real time interaction plus some asynchronous learning. Right. Fantastic. Thank you guys so much. So let's talk about, let's define it. So blended learning is actually an umbrella term for lots of different approaches. So at its heart, it's using like face-to-face, -face, online, asynchronous and synchronous. And as we were getting ready, we we're like, God, the, the language is hard because um, the whole face-to-face -face language is, is a bit awkward now because like uh, I teach um, right now and I know that I have, sometimes I have students in Zoom and have some in the room and are they really face to face? It's, it's, it's difficult. So um, today I'm using some awkward language of together time. So because we're living in strange times. So when I say together time, it refers to when I'm with my students at the same time. So they could be in the classroom or Zoom at the same time. We're, we're all finding that, that new territory. So Blended learning is actually an intentional approach. You actually have thought about it, about how to get your students um, together. Um, COVID made us reactive. Let's just be honest. So in that fateful March 2020, when we all like shut down and went remote and we just kind of reacted and then that following fall, we all got online and then we came back to campus and it was, we had to be flexible and, uh, it, it was, a, we, we figured it out, but it was a weird time. So the pandemic is still here. Let me use that language. It, it's not gone away, although we would all love it if we go away. But now is the time that we can start being more intentional about making decisions like this. So we've got some more flexibility and we can be more thoughtful. So we've got terms that we use. Um, and again, there's a lot of, there's a lot of, um, play here and definitions and how people use hybrids and we'll talk about that here in just a moment so that hybrid is essentially that online and that face-to-face -face or together time so 
your instructional hours, like if you have a three credit hour class that meets for three hours, it's a blend of online and face-to-face. -face. Whereas high flex refers to that same blend, but students can decide at any moment, say, I'm not going to go to the face-to-face, -face, I'm going to just do it online. So they, students have that flexibility, they can decide, whereas hybrid tends to be much more of, yes, you will have that synchronous time. And then there's online synchronous, which uh, really impressed me about how faculty kind of jumped into that for the fall 2020. Um, a lot of online synchronous classes came to be, and some of them actually liked it and stayed there. So those are those terms, but again, there's a lot of fluidity in those terms as well. So we need to keep that in mind. So the question that I get a lot from faculty is how does UNCG define it? So what I did was um, we, we actually taught a workshop about um, hybrid learning here um, in the fall, our office did. And we found this is in the course scheduling documentation for Banner for the registrar's office. So, you know, there's course schedules, all course schedulers all around the campus, and they use this documentation to enter courses in Banner. And this is the chart they look at on page 27 of that document. They look at this chart and decide which one. And you can notice there's things on here that like codes on here I can't define for you, but I'm going to um, hopefully make you look at the asynchronous, so it's online only. You got the synchronous, so it's online only, but it's uh, at the same time. And then you got the hybrid or the hybrid, and it's uh, hybrid courses that replace a percentage of face-to-face -face instructional minutes with web-based online minutes, and they use those minutes as the official designation. So um, I taught a hybrid class this last fall, and so I wanted to see what students saw. So I went into Banner, and this is what students saw for my class. So if they, they, if they actually pull up your class and they click it, they get this, this box, and they use the menu there on the left to kind of look at the different options. And if they go under instructor meetings and times, this is what they see. So you can see that I taught class Mondays and Wednesdays in, in together from 1 to 150, and then Friday was considered the online time, or that, that time to work. So that's how students saw it. Um, I think that's always important as faculty that we we know how students are getting that information about our courses and how they're seeing that. So in our research this last fall when we were talking about hybrid I'm like what are the what are the other schools doing what's what's going on out there. So um, I pulled up and I wanted to show you this uh, to you. This is UNC uh, Carolina Wilmington. This is their course codes. I found this fascinating because this is a lot. This is a lot of information here. Um, you can see see like periodic face-to-face -face with sync, async, lots of different options here. And, and it can probably go on and on and on. So there's lots of different ways to look at blended. So, but I wanted to share like how our other schools are actually defining it and more importantly, communicating that to our students and their students. So there's questions you may be asking yourself because you know, if, if you've taught a blended class, whether you had, you wanted to go that route or not, or you're thinking about moving that way, what are questions that you're now asking yourself? And you're thinking, how does this actually change things? How does making it blended actually change things? What's really different? So again, you're thinking about together time and then independent time. So that together time, whatever mode you're taking, becomes much more focused. So that changes a lot. So but I don't know about you, but so when I moved back on campus, like everybody else and started teaching in person, I realized just uh, how much I missed being in the same room with my students and seeing their faces and uh, having those conversations. And the great thing is that blended kind of gives me the best of both worlds. It gives me that online time to get them through that material and that face-to-face -face um, conversation time. But I'm also frustrated, like a lot of faculty, I'm frustrated because I'm now dealing with attendance issues, whether it's COVID related or not, getting students to come to class, getting students to come prepared to class. Oh my gosh, just, did you do the reading? Did you do the reading? No, they just look at you with this blank eyes. So how do I help them get them to come prepared to the class and help them stay on task? And I find that a blended class helps me address that in a different way than I haven't had with other modes. Uh, and let me explain how I structured the class and that might help um, illuminate that. So 
my 50 minute sessions tend to be like maybe five minutes of like a brief lecture. And that lecture is where did they have questions online? Like what do they keep missing online? And then, then I did activities. There's things that are really difficult to do online, that group work, that discussion, really getting them to stand up and present because I teach CST 105, making them stand up and talk in those impromptu, kind of getting that used to that um, audience looking at you kind of experience. So I, I used that time for that, but then online became more set to their pace. So, you know, as a teacher, you walk in and you go one pace, but there's 25 students in there or 50 or 100 and they're, they all need to go a different pace. So putting that information online allows them to kind of go their own pace. So students, some, you know, some students saying to listen to your lecture 10 times to get it. I mean, that's just the reality or, you know, listen to it, stop and then go back. And there's some students who got to like, hey, I need to, I need to turn on uh, double time. So like you're going twice as fast because they're just really getting it. So everyone gets their own pace. So what I do is I put that information online and then I give them one or more assessments and say, do you, are you ready? Do you really have it? Do you really have it? So that when they come to class, they have it and then we can have deeper discussions and I can answer questions and uh, I'm actually spending my time more on activities than actual lecture. So uh, that's kind of what happens when you teach a blended class, you kind of think about that differently. Like, can a student go their own pace? Um, and yes, they can. So let's talk about when it's appropriate. This is a big one. Um, it's not for everyone. That's just the reality. It, it, is, it is a purposeful, intentional discussion that you had with yourself and your department chair, if it's appropriate. And I know that some, pro some programs here at UNCG are actually really pushing this and, and going this way and are excited about it. Like the Bryan School, they're very motivated to move to blended learning just because of the, the need of flexibility for their target audience of those students. So they're, uh, they're embracing it, um, but other programs will find their own way if they want to embrace them. Uh, so but just keep in mind that blended learning is very student focused and they, but they have to commit to a certain level of work online before to pre they prepare for class. And that's really hard. So that means I have to think about what things do I need to put online and design online to make them, make sure that they know that they're ready. And again, students are motivated by grade. So I got to do something for a grade to kind of get them there. Uh, so they'll have them do the reading, which I hope they do the reading, and then they review my video, do assessments, and then so that, again, that time together is meaningful. So uh, you can also use Canvas for remediation. So some students um, need more, more, more content, more activities to get it. Like, for instance, in my class, students really suffer or struggle with verbal citations. They see it, but then saying it out loud or remembering the information, it's just really hard. So I might could use my online time to give them more time to remediate and kind of get that information. And then again, we got those students who just go really fast. They're just like, I got it, I got it, I got it. So that having that time online allows them to kind of, again, move at their own pace. And I can also give them things that are more advanced. So I keep them interested because that's a big one. I keep them interested, keep getting them going. So let's say that you're, you're enticed or curious and want to go further. What are your next steps? So let's talk about those next steps. So if this is a new thing for you, if you've never taught a blended class, like an intentional blended class, I mean, we have that a reactive time. So let's talk about an intentional class. I do recommend that you consider your next step as reaching out to the UTLC. And we're gonna give you a link to that consultation form here at the end of, let's help you talk through that. So my favorite thing in life to do is besides, you know, being with my family is I like to sit down with faculty and help them dream it up. Like we look at your outcomes and go, where do you want it? How do you want to assess this? Where do you want to go? So helping you through that. So alignment to those outcomes is always the number one question, getting there. And you got to think about structure, like what do you want to do? Like, for instance, I use the online time for them to get ready for the next class, but I've seen faculty say, I want to get ready in class and then get them ready for the online work. So you can kind of decide, is online the driver or is that time together the driver? You can decide that. You also want to start communicating your intentions to your department chair, of course, like if, because again, you want to make that known in the schedule so that students can make those decisions, uh, those informed decisions before they sign up for your class. Um, 
And if you wanna teach a class like this, you may be struggling with finding the right approach for yourself. So I know some faculty really struggled with um, when they, you know, re reacting to COVID, they're like, my classroom, I wanted them to all talk to each other, but the Zoom kids couldn't, or Zoom students, excuse me, couldn't hear the room, the, ki uh, the students in the, I call them all kids, sorry, y'all, and we call them the Zoom and the in-class, they couldn't hear each other, it was, it was frustrating, or my internet connection at home is not strong enough, um, or I don't want to teach an online synchronous in my, my, my office, it was awkward. So, because I want that classroom technology, I didn't have the whiteboard, I didn't have the, the way to show pictures and stuff. So uh, actually UNCG has kind of thought of that. And we now have some new rooms that can actually make that easier. So you can think differently about how to connect to your students and then what options could you use as a teacher. So Evan is here today from Learning Technology to kind of introduce his new spaces to us. Evan? Yeah, thanks, Amy. Um, I'd like to introduce some of our hybrid ready learning spaces at UNCG. Um, these spaces were created so that we could better connect with our students who were not able to make it to class. And it's our investment with engaging distant students during the pandemic, as well as after the pandemic, which like Amy said, we hope is soon, but it's, it's not here yet. Um, these spaces are equipped with a digital dry erase board, uh, multiple displays at the front and back of the room, uh, auto tracking cameras, a dual monitor PC, laptop connection, and a document camera. And all the technology you can find in these rooms uh, can integrate with Zoom to provide an experience that's as close to being as the, being in the classroom as we can make it. So I'll go to the next slide. And I want to tell you that we currently have two learning spaces available that are equipped with this technology. There's Stone 186 and Stone 169. So I'm in 186 right now, and each of, this, each of these rooms fulfills a different, different purpose, so I'll tell you about each one. Um, 186 is our premier hybrid ready classroom, and it can be reserved through the registrar for your events or for your regular classes. Um, it has four cameras uh, that can be used to capture the instructor and the class from any angles. So I mentioned they were tracking, so it will follow me as I walk around. Um, and each of them are designed to be able to be operated easily uh, by just the instructor. So there's a pad at the front of the class um, and you can do most operations just by pressing one button and it'll uh, display what you need to your Zoom session. Um, so I'll give you a demo of that in a little bit, but I wanna talk about Stone 169 first. So we'll go to the next slide. And in terms of technology, Stone 169 is just like Stone 186. We have the same motion tracking cameras. We have the same great microphones. Uh, we have dry erase boards and document cameras, um, but there aren't any seats for the students to attend in person. Uh, so the idea is that this is like a classroom without the class. So there's no students, at least present in the room. <laughs> um, so you can host your class synchronously online or you can pre-record your lectures with access to all this great technology uh, that you might not find in the regular classroom. So those are really kind of the two uh, primary use cases of Stone 169. Um, so you might wanna use it if your home internet isn't very reliable, like Amy was saying, um, or if you'd like a consistent classroom environment to teach your online courses. Um, either of those, this is, a, this is a great option, Stone 169. Um, in the future, we're going to be calling spaces like Stone 169, where it's the classroom without the class, a video conference room, or a VCR. And I think there are two headed to uh, the Ryan building. Um, so yeah, so those are each of the options. One's a more hybrid-focused environment, and the other one's more uh, synchronous online or a pre-recorded session. So now that I've talked a bit about each of these spaces, um, I'd like to pull down the slides and I'll start showing you around the room. Okay, so uh, I mentioned that there are motion tracking cameras, so you can follow me around and I just want to show you how far they go. So you can find me up here at the back of the class and it doesn't really matter where I go. I can go to the middle, get down among the students and the desks, um, and then I can return to the podium and the camera is gonna track me the whole way around the room. So another thing that I uh, hope was apparent while I was moving around the room was 
uh, that you could hear me the whole time. Um, so that's because of these uh, beam forming microphones that we have in each of these spaces. Um, so basically in this room, there's four and they'll detect speech. And when they detect it, they'll kind of lock on and zero in like on the source. So in th that case, it's me. Uh, so anywhere I go, uh, I'll be right there. Um, so you might want to let your students know about uh, how accurate they are and how they do lock on. So if there's a side conversation in the back, you need to let them know that maybe if they were trying to keep something private, it might not be so private. People on the distant end might, might hear it. So um, we <laughs> mostly a plus for the instructor and it, it may uh, keep some of these side conversations down. Um, now, if you're familiar with some of our standard technology enhanced classrooms, you will be familiar with the document camera, but I'd like to show it to you anyway, um, just to give an example of how we can use it in Zoom. So on Zoom, I'm gonna go to share my screen and you can share it just like, just like any other screen. So I'll click share and then I'll click document camera on my pad. So here uh, you can see I have a map of UNCG campus and uh, this would be fine if you had a syllabus or any other, in, any other notes that you take uh, physically and you wanted to share those with the class. But uh, here I am, I'm just reminding you all that uh, we're in the stone building. <laughs> and um, I had mentioned earlier that most things can be done with one button on the Xtron panel. Uh, so I'd like to show you our dry erase board and I'm just gonna click right here on the dry erase board button. And I'll come over here and demo it for you. So I've already got uh, the Pythagorean theorem written on the board and I've used multiple different colors so that you can see you can use anything you want. Um, it'll, it'll pick it up and display it accurately uh, to the students uh, at home. So I'm just going to write Pythagorean theorem uh, just to show it out. And as you can see, it takes a couple seconds for it to pop in. Um, so with that, with that sacrifice of a small delay, we do get a big plus. So while it takes a second or two for it to pop in, we don't have to worry about standing in front of the board like I am now. We don't have to worry about covering up some of our equations or diagrams while we're writing on it. The students who are attending class remotely will be able to see, see it and take notes all the time. Even in, even in class, I've had that issue where like sometimes you can't take notes because someone's just in the way. And in this classroom, uh, the dry erase board gets displayed digitally too. So students in person have that same great experience. Um, okay, so I'm gonna stop sharing for now. And I'd like to show you the thing that makes this really a, a true hybrid classroom. And in my opinion, that's the uh, interaction between our in-person students and our remote students. So we want to get as close to face-to-face -to -face as possible. So I'll show you what I'm going to do. So first I'll select the Zoom and put it on my board. And now I can see everybody who's attending there. And I will swap my camera to our audience camera. So now I'm going to join you all in the audience. Okay, there I am. So I'm out here, uh, just like your students would be. And because of the multiple cameras and different angles that we can achieve in this room, uh, you can tell who's talking. If I'm a student over here, you know it's me. If I'm a student over here, you can still tell. And no matter which who I am, you can hear me clearly and understand who I am. And with the Zoom view, at the front, I can tell who's talking if you guys want to have a conversation with me as well. So I think this is as close as we can get to face-to-face, -to -face, as just as, cl as close as we can get to it, but uh, really facilitating that together time. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so I think um, we have some more resources in another slide, but I'm going to be joining you all from here in the audience, just so, uh, so you can get a better idea of how it works. 
And if you have any questions for me or Amy, we'll be happy to answer them. After this is over, we're going to send you with Sam uh, a list of links to use to those next steps or a consultation form, how to reserve this room. So we'll, you'll definitely get those links and the, the follow up message. All right. Do you have any questions about um, teaching a blended class or using one of these spaces? So Matt has a question in the chat. Do you need to wear a uh, FOB or anything as an instructor to be tracked by cameras? So no, you don't need to wear anything like that. Um, basically, when you turn the tracking camera on at the beginning of your class, it will look for a human-like object. And when it finds it, it will identify it automatically and track your own. So I'm not wearing a microphone. I'm not wearing anything that's pointing a camera at me. I'm just here in the room. Yeah, I also dropped in the chat a quick assessment in case you have to leave um, as y'all are thinking about questions, um, as well as a link to where you could sign up for our webinar tomorrow um, on inclusive teaching practices with the academic ITC for the Bryan School, Rob Owens. Um, so check that out. I think a lot of y'all are signed up already, but um, you know, in case you're not, there it is. Um, so one comment I had, I said I said this in the chat, I, as a librarian, especially because of like, you know, seating charts right now, I have been going to a lot of different classrooms and this is at all not as nice as this in any way. Like, you know, so if there's the blended going on, it's always like through the computer and we have to be really careful to like walk to the computer periodically, right? Because of the mics and stuff. So I think this is a really nice setup. I love it. Yeah, I'm really excited about both of these rooms and glad to be able to share them with you. <laughs> Does anyone have any questions for Amy and or Evan? Yeah, I liked the demo too. I feel like I liked that. So Matt asked, how do instructors sign up for the rooms again? So Matt, I'm going to send everyone uh, through Sam uh, the links to use to sign up. It's through the registrar's office. Yep, 186 through the registrar, and we have a form for 169. We'll, we'll send that to you. Okay. Well, we're right at 1230. So wow, Evan and Amy, amazing timing. Um, I'm impressed. So please fill out the assessment. If y'all have a chance, you will get an email with this recording. All the other recordings are on that, that link I dropped on online learning, you know, the page there. Um, that's where the recordings live. So if you want to see what we've done in the past, if y'all have any ideas for the future, because a lot of y'all are instructional technologists here, uh, let us know. But thank you all. Have a good rest of your day. And thank you, Amy and Evan in particular. And I will follow up with the links that they mentioned, as well as the uh, YouTube recording, as well as the transcript. Bye. Thanks so much for having us.